Speaker of the House Mike Johnson was interviewed. I think this is uh, on NBC. Uh, I think this is an NBC reporter. I uh, just have the audio of it, but this is amazing Uh-oh. how they are trying to turn him into an election denier, and they're trying to beat him with that stick continually because anybody who said anything uh, about the problems that existed in the 2020 election cycle is an election denier. Now, if you still, as we just pointed out, are harping about 2016 and Russian influence and all of that nonsense, you're perfectly fine. Yeah, that's, you're, that's great. You're rewarded with House leadership in the Democrat Party. Sure. And you won't be questioned. You won't be taken to task on that by any reporter ever. Uh, but here's Mike Johnson trying to explain the brief, the amicus brief he filed. Um, back in... Uh, 2021, you were mm-hmm. the lawmaker who circulated the the legal brief known as the Texas Amicus Brief, mm-hmm. um, challenging the 2020 election outcome in a number of states, which by CBS editorial standards makes you an election denier. Oh, by CBS oh. <laughs> uh, editorial <laughs> standards? Oh man, you don't want to run afoul of those. <laughs> uh, I can't believe she said that with a straight face. I know. I know. <sighs> Wow, powerful. Uh, you've just put me in my place, uh, Putin. That's so, nonsense. Well, that's, can nonsense. I get you on the record on that? I've like, always you... been consistent on the record. Did, did you read the brief? Did you get a chance to read what we found? This is this. Well, I, well I, I have read extensively some criticisms of that. You, but, you read commentary about the brief, but oh, not what we submitted to the court. But you right? How great is that? Busted. That he got that admission. She hadn't even read the brief, but she read the criticism of it. Uh, oh, Great, okay. Great question. What a great journalist you yeah. are. Yeah, he's awesome. Recognize yeah. that President Biden won the 2020 election. Can Do you, you recognize that? President that Biden was issue? certified as the winner of the election. He took the oath of office. He's been okay. the president for three years. Okay. What I, the argument that we presented to the court, which is our only Get avenue this. to do so, was that the Constitution was clearly violated in the 2020 oh. election. It's hmm. Article 2, Section 1, and anyone can Google it and read it for themselves. The, the system mm-hmm. by which you choose electors to elect the president of the United States uh, must be done by the individual states, and mm-hmm. the system must be ratified by the state legislatures. And it was language, plain so language out of the Constitution. you still have issues. Listen to that. She ignores the constitutional reality that was violated. So you still have problems with the election. Yeah, I just explained to you that it was unconstitutional. Yes, Pumpkin, stay with me here. Are you capable? Am I speaking English? Do you understand English? Is it your first language? What is going on here? (laughs) This is incredible. With the validity of the 2020 election. Uh Anyone who Googles... Even though the... Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who pulls up the Constitution... Sorry, go ahead. Anyone who pulls up the <laughs> Constitution you. on their smartphone okay. and reads Article 2, Section 1 mm-hmm. of the Constitution has to agree with what I just told you. The Constitution mm-hmm. was violated in the run-up to the 2020 mm. election. Not not always Can in bad faith, but in, in the aftermath of COVID, many uh-huh. states changed their election laws in uh-huh. ways that violated that plain language. That's uh-huh. just a fact. Um, it's just a we fact. presented that argument and that, that um, those facts to the court. And, uh, and, and it was never directly addressed because of the Texas lit- litigation. But that was uh. the only uh, vehicle we had to present that issue squarely to the court. It was completely shut down uh, as, as an issue. But your colleague, Liz Cheney, your former colleague, oh, wrote, no. Mike Johnson and our Republican leaders had played a destructive role. You, you, she says, convinced 125 other Republican members of Congress to sign on to an amicus brief that many never read that made numerous false like factual you? and constitutional like claims. You. How do you respond to that? I love And this. the impression this. that you might have contributed in some way. No, I, I don't January spend 6th. much time responding to Liz Cheney's criticism these days. Thank Liz you. Cheney worked with the Democrats um, so great. Uh, on the Jan 6, uh, January 6th uh, uh, Select Committee right. uh, to, to make all of this even more politicized than it was. Um, she was a, a a, a close friend and colleague before um, she, said she that made those choices. Yeah. About you. I, I, so, you know, which is why look, she was surprised. She said, "Well, well, I'm surprised that she's giving that criticism because That's during right. that process, uh, Liz and I were in constant dialogue about that. And it, mm-hmm. at one point, she even considered signing on to that bill. I, I'll, I'll tell you that, that is a fact. Interesting. Um, uh, to that uh, amicus brief, um, 
and we talked about that at great length. And we had a difference of opinion on the law, and, and, and people can agree to disagree on that. But I'm telling you that the plain language of the Constitution has never changed. Hmm. And what happened in many states by changing the election laws without ratification by the state legislatures is a violation of the Constitution. That's a, that's a plain fact that no one can dispute. Calmly, coolly, factually, just shut her down. Hmm. Uh, that's the way to do it. You get your money for nothing hmm. and your chicks for free. That's the way you do it. Yeah, because if they weren't, weren't free, they'd be illegal in 49 states. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, that uh, same Mike Johnson, though, is caving on the budget. Yeah, so that's while I love, I yeah, love, I love his that, stoic you know, reaction yeah. there to yeah. the CBS News. According to our definition, uh, that makes oh, yeah, you an CBS, election denier. NBC. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, there's some really good stuff with him. Yeah. And there's some stuff that and you, know, you don't like. Yeah. But, but. He's definitely, can anyone deny that he's an upgrade from Kevin McCarthy? I don't think so. <laughs> I think he's definitely that. So that's good. I like it when the press is put in her place. And, yeah. and then she, how odd was it for her to lean on, and many of Republicans uh, admit that they didn't even read that uh, before signing on. Yeah, it. and neither did you. You dumbass. <laughs> you just admitted you didn't read it. Uh, <laughs> so great. Okay. What's not so great is that Michelle Obama has been out in front, uh, you know, babbling about things that uh, <laughs> shouldn't concern her. I will say this <laughs> is the out most of it. concerning it's clip. Concerning. I think, yeah, uh, in in relation to your theory that at one point she might jump into this race. Yeah, it's if scary. this clip of hers was six months ago, I'd be even more terrified. Yeah, but still, I'm still concerned. You know what? I I think she hates America so much she doesn't want to serve it. It's just it's serve it. too difficult a job. It it involves too much stuff that she doesn't want to be bothered with because she doesn't like the country in the first place. I don't know, man. She wants to serve it up for our yeah, enemies. Yeah, I know. That's that is true. <laughs> but it would take some effort, and she doesn't want to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. here she is discussing how scared she is. Uh oh. She's terrified. Okay. What keeps me up are the things that I know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The war in the region. In too many regions, what is AI going to do for us? The environment, you know, oh, are we moving at yeah. all fast enough? What are we right. doing no. about education? What are we doing? Are about people going to vote? Uh -huh. And why aren't people voting? Why are we too stuck to our phones? I mean, those are yeah. the things those that are keep the me up that because keep you, her up. you don't have control over them, mm -hmm. and you wonder mm -hmm. where are people? Where are we in mm. this? Uh, you know, where are our hearts? What's going to happen wonder. in this next election? Uh -huh. I am terrified, She's terrified about what could possibly happen because mm, our leaders too. matter. Who we select? Yeah. Who speaks for us? Who holds that bully pulpit? Mm -hmm. It affects us in mm -hmm. ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. Yeah. You know, the fact that people think that government, eh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really even do anything. And I'm like, Positive oh, my percent. God. Did she just say people take for granted? Oh, no. Like a countertop? Is that Glenn Beck in there? Yeah, I, that's a Glenn thing. Huh. I wonder if she got Wait, that directly re, from Glenn. Re, Glenn. Re, rewind that a little bit, Maybe Joe, 10 or 15 seconds. that's the most important issue in this whole clip. <laughs> I didn't even want to think about the rest of it. But did she say, take it for granted? Let's see. Our leaders matter. Mm -hmm. Who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit. It affects us in ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. Yep. Oh! They, they take it for granted when it should be for Micah. Or uh, Corian. I don't know. It should be some other surface, not granite. <laughs> <laughs> While you were focusing on that, I was focusing on that. She's the only one that has a glass straw Wait, inside her cup. Let's see this. She what? has a glass straw? Yeah. Go back. Look at that. That's gla that's a glass straw? Yes, that's a glass straw. You can see right through it. Oh. Okay. Well, while huh. Pat was focused on <laughs> granite and you were focused on, on the, the straw. glass straw, I'm focused on the gold-plated Kleenex box. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, okay. What in the world? What kind of set is this? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> can I just point out, though, um, as, as much as I think we've avoided um, the Gavin Newsom and Michelle Obama bomb, for the most part... I'm just looking at the primary calendar, and here's the last option that I can see, is that if Trump wins the first string of primaries, caucus, all that stuff, and it becomes uh -huh. blatantly obvious by the end of February, because that's when South Carolina is, uh, South Carolina is February 24th, mm. if at that point 
Trump has just steamrolled the opposition. He's obviously going to be the GOP nominee. That's where I think they pull Joe Biden aside and they say, you need to get out 